All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, thanks for the, the you guys who have um, tuned into this. Um, yeah, hopefully everybody's in good spirits and all feeling good, ready for uh, an exciting um, week weekend coming up. Um, I'm down in Taupo myself at the moment. I've been here since um, Friday last week. And uh, I certainly made the most of the good weather um, over the last few days. And um, it's been fantastic. I've been training on the course. I've been out swimming in the court on the lake and I've been running over the run course. And it's just um, it's just magnificent. It's such a such a cool place. So, um, yeah, I know the, the weather is um, looking a little bit iffy as we get closer to the race but uh, we'll talk a little bit about that um, I have a few thoughts on um, what we can uh, do around that and how to sort of help ourselves get through um, those situations but um, yeah if uh, like if anybody has any questions after this recording has gone out then um, please just email me um, and um, I'll uh, see what I can do to help and otherwise um, if you want to catch up with me in person I'll be at the um, first time has become one tent um, at uh, the race expo area um, on I'll be there uh, from 10 to 12 on Thursday um, and I'll have um, a bit of merchandise for traffic hot uh, socks hats swim caps etc so um, if you want to get any of that gear I'll have that with me come along say hi I'd love to meet some of you guys I um, there's lots of names in this group that I haven't had the chance to meet before so it'll be really cool to um, put a face the name and um, we can uh, make sure we give each other the encouragement on race day that um, that we'll all need. Um, I'm racing as well, so um, we can uh, we can all share in our discomfort together, um, but also, uh, you know, share the elation as we cross the finish line um, throughout the course of the day. So really looking forward to what's coming up. But the purpose for today's call really is um, I want to just go through a few pre-race things um obviously everyone's got their own little systems and styles of dealing with um race week but um i uh, i want to talk you through how i how i cope with it and um i'd be interested to hear um if anybody has any suggestions on how they um sort of cope with race week things um and as we get uh and as and we'll discuss a little bit about the course um, my observations from um training on the course this week and yeah, we'll go a little bit into the weather. Um, with a little bit of discussion about the upcoming training plans for those of you that are um, carrying on through to the next block of training. But primarily today's call is for those of you that are racing Ironman or the 70.3 on uh, on Saturday this week. So, um, so here we go. So, uh, yeah, as I said, weather forecast isn't looking great. Um, I've been keeping a pretty close eye on a few different um with the apps um and yeah it's meant to be a pretty solid block of rain that's coming across uh it's due to hit on saturday um there's always a chance that it could it could um run through a little bit sooner than that um or even delay a little bit so fingers crossed we don't um we don't get affected too much by it um i will say that you know i raced ironman new zealand in um i think 2011 um, when it was um, another really, really heavy rain day. And to be honest, while the race was on, I, I just didn't even, I, it wasn't really a factor for me. It was, um, I, I felt more sorry for the spectators that were um, having to deal with it rather than fellow athletes. Um, you know, it, we, we're wet when we get into the water and it just meant that we were pretty wet for the rest of the day. But uh, it, it did affect the atmosphere a little bit without so many people out watching um but um yeah that's a bit of a shame but at the end of the day uh still did an Ironman still crossed the finish line turned out to be a really really challenging day um but um in in all considerations it was it was probably a more satisfying finish because it's it's that one that everybody says oh do you remember 2011 it's like yeah I remember 2011 2022 might be the same um but like I say um we're still a few days out so it may change the the one good thing that comes with a weather pattern that we're looking at at the moment is um, the the wind is predominantly northerly, which means um, 
you, you generally have a headwind going out towards Reparoa, but then you get a nice strong tailwind coming home. And I won't say that's going to affect, um, that's going to be from behind the whole way, because um, if you look at the, the map of the course, you'll see that the, that um, the bike course is on a curve. So uh, at some points on the course, you will get crosswinds, but for a lot of it, you do find that you get a tail tailwind um but heading out obviously you will get some headwind but also you get a lot of crosswinds as well so expect it to be a little bit varied um but yeah it's, it's just one of those things it's it doesn't look like it's super windy but it's just enough to be um just a, a constant steady breeze um and and yeah unfortunately if the wind if the wind blows from the north it brings the rain which um which has always been the case in this area so like I say, fingers crossed it'll be all right, but uh, we'll never know until we get there. But um, in saying that, I, there are some things that I recommend people do in terms of preparation. Um, I'll, I'll be going into um, transition with, uh, in, in my transition bag, I'll have a set of um, really nice sort of light, but quite warm arm warmers, um, which I'll probably use them on the bike. Um, and I may, I may take them off later on. It's not going to be super cold, from what I've seen because of that northerly breeze. But um, if you if you do get wet and there is a wind, it can be cold anyway. So I would probably use those arm warmers for the first part of the ride and then look at discarding them at the um, discard point. I think it's at bottle bottle station three out near Reparoa. Um, you can't discard anywhere else in the course. So don't, don't sort of expect to come back to transition and drop them back at transition. You've got to drop them at that particular aid station. Put your name on them and you'll get them back the next day um the other thing i've got is a a really really nice high quality asos um cycling vest um it's it's like a it's like a pro level vest it's super tight but it's really really warm and it's really aerodynamic so um i'm quite happy to to wear that and knowing that it'll fit me quite quite tight and it'll be really really good in terms of um airflow um if you've got a jacket that flaps around um i really wouldn't recommend using it um it's just that any any material that's flapping can can cause a lot of drag it can be a lot slower so always try to keep any extra um warm clothing um as close fitting as possible so that means if you're not going to have a flappy jacket on um maybe consider having a um a, a warm um base layer under your tri suit um and because you know if you're not going to overheat in these conditions you can get too cold um so a base layer is going to be really nice because it'll it'll just keep that um that just give you another layer of protection it's not going to be on the outside of your clothing so it's not going to flap around and when you get to the end of the bike if you want to take it off you can just remove it um and um you know a base layer is just a really good another layer of protection so a couple of things here to think about the other thing i might do is um I've got some really nice thin cycling gloves um, and I may put them on at the beginning of the bike. I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll put them into transition bag. And as I come out of the water, I'll uh, make a quick assessment of how the weather is and whether it's cold. And if it is, then I might put those gloves on. I may go without. Um, in terms of um, race prior to the, the race start, um, again, another thing I always focus on doing is keeping warm. Um, so I'll have a nice jacket on. I might have a beanie, have long pants, and I'll try and keep that on for as long as I can um, before I put my wetsuit on because I don't want to be getting cold um, prior to the race start. Um, I've swum in the lake a couple of times, and uh, first first time was um, seven o'clock a couple of mornings ago, and it was on Sunday morning, and it was it was pretty cool, pretty chilly. But it, 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 once I was in after two or three minutes, it it was absolutely fine. I didn't even notice it. A little bit of face face freeze but my fingers and toes were fine um and i normally feel the cold water more than most so if i was feeling okay then uh, it was pretty good one thing i did have was a neoprene um, swim cap underneath my normal swim cap and um that's the first time i've worn one of those and it just gave me an extra layer of warmth and i really enjoyed it and i think i'll definitely wear that on race morning so if you haven't got one consider getting a neoprene swim cap um, I know that um, some of the retailers in town will have them. Um, I've got a Blue 70 one, and I know Blue 70 have a pop-up store in town 
So um, pop along, get one of those. You'll, uh, you'll, I think you'll, you'll, you'll really find the advantage of it. Um, the swim, as as per usual, is just beautiful, clear water. Um, you know, it's just, it's just it's the best place to swim in in the world. So um, very, very, very lucky to have this ability to swim in this course. Um, and as you know, it's a slightly different course to what it's been previously. So we're starting at a different point. Um, I've sort of gone down and done a, um, a reconnaissance of that start area and um, it it's, looks like it's going to work pretty well. So I'm actually really excited by this new this new swim course approach that we've got. Um, yeah, it's, it's really nice. And uh, the boys are out now. So I swam around the boys today on half the course and um, it was nice. It was, um, it was very easy to navigate. Um, and I think once you get here into town, uh, and have a look at the course yourself. You'll you'll really see that it's um it's very very straightforward. Um, and as you know, the bike course now is slightly different to previous years. So uh, the transition area is in a different location. So now when you get on the bike, you go um, straight up Rifle Range Road, straight up Spa Road, all the way up to the racetrack. So it's about eight to ten kilometres of probably eight kilometres of fairly steady climbing. So um, the biggest thing I noticed was as I got to the top of the race course, my average speed was a lot lower than um, what it would have been in previous years. We've had quite a bit of flat to, to get into the rhythm. So you'll be going up this hill um, and you'll look at your speed and you think, man, I'm really struggling today. This is going to be tough. But just keep in mind, it is quite a steady incline. Um, and if you're pushing too hard up that hill to try and get your speed up, it'll cost you later in the day so just be patient just be just be chilled about it get up to the racetrack let's do the little out and back dog leg down centennial drive and then settle into your race effort because i think once you're over that first 10 kilometers then you'll be into into the job um and it'll make a lot more sense um being a little bit more patient there and then building your way into the race after that um the the road surface is really good um i i this is, this is my 12th Ironman New Zealand. And every year I've come back here thinking, oh, I'm going to get my teeth shaken out. The road's so rough. But actually, when I, mean, I rode the course on Saturday, I was just, I was really, really pleasantly surprised by the, the good condition of the road. It was, um, it's still a little bit of a rough chip and it's still a little bit more than, um, than we would like. And it's a, a little bit rougher than you get in some of the, you know, there's nice race courses that we've, We've got in other areas, but um, it certainly doesn't feel as bad as it has in previous years. There's, there were no areas of new seal. Um, there's a couple of small patches of slightly rougher surface, which, um, you know, you just you just ride over them. But um, there wasn't really any area that I was dreading. Um, so, yeah, be, be pretty pretty comfortable in the fact that the course surface is in good nick. And saying that, um, if you had a 25 to 28 mil tyre, um, running them at about 70 to 75, maybe 80 PSI would be absolutely perfect for most people. Um, and uh, that's still a fast rolling setup and it would work really well for, for this course. Um, the run course is, um, as always, it's it's a fantastic run course. It goes along the lakefront. Um, it, it's four laps, so it's quite compact, quite close to town. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit busier than some of the old days when it was over the two or three lap course. But um, the um, it, there's plenty of room. It's plenty of wide enough. Um, there's going to be a lot of space to um, to have people pass or will be passed. And um, uh, and the A stations are, are pretty well spaced out, so you should be able to have no problems with um, with all that sort of stuff there. I um, and I can't remember if it was last year if they had changed the direction of the run course, but um, and the previous years that I've raced here, we've gone up over the hill on the road, past the, past the mobile station, all the way out to Rainbow Point. This time you go around the lakefront and you come back over um, on the road over, over the mobile mobile hill, which adds a little bit of a little bit of an incline at the end of the run. Um, but in the end, it's still the same elevation over the course of the race. So that's basically my course summary. Um, I'm really looking forward to this race. Uh, like I say, it's been... I've done this race plenty of times before, but I haven't actually done this since 20, uh, 20, 2018, I think, 2017, 2018, 2017, man.
Um, yeah, so that's the last time I race here. So I'm really looking forward to getting back in. Um, and yeah, so if you guys had any questions on the course, jump ahead, um, jump and ask me. But um, I'll go through a little bit of my preparation now that we know um, how things are possibly going to be looking as we get close to the race. So um, I've had two cases of misfortune this this week. I uh, Saturday on my ride, my DI2 battery in flat. So I got out to Repara and um, I ran out of battery, so I couldn't use my front derailleur. So I was in my small chain ring all the way coming home and I was only using my rear derailleurs, uh, my, my rear derailleur. So I could only get access to my small chain ring and the, and the back gears, but um, it was absolutely fine. But it's a, it was a really good reminder if you are using DI2 to, um, or SRAM um, ETAP is to charge your batteries. Make sure your batteries are in, in full charge before you... Um, before you jump in the race, um, you, you don't want to have a battery go flat. It's not the end of the world, but it's also quite frustrating. Um, and the other thing that happened was I was riding on Sunday afternoon, just out on a nice cruisy training ride, and um, I was coming to the bottom of a hill, changed gear, and it threw my derailleur into my spokes and pulled my derailleur hanger off So and broke my derailleur. So effectively on Sunday, I broke my bike, which, um, which wasn't particularly ideal. So um, I have managed to get a new derailleur hanger and I've got a new derailleur coming down and I've um, got it in at the bike shop. So it's going to get fixed, but it's just a sign that these things still happen. You know, there's still, still shit that happens in race week. Um, I had, my bike had been serviced last week. Um, it was running absolutely fine. It was just, it was just a, a, an incident in an old frame. The derailleur hanger was probably quite soft and flexible over the years and years of being ridden and it was probably going to happen anyway. And I'm just glad it didn't happen on race day because it would have ended my race. Instead, I've, um, I've had this moment of misfortune, dealt with it and uh, we'll be fine come race day. So um, it's a good reminder, check your bike, make sure everything's working fine. Um, make sure all the, 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 the bolts are tight. You don't want your saddle to slip down. You don't want your handlebars to be, to be loose. Um, check your tires are in good condition. Um, make sure you haven't got any holes or any glass that's sitting in there. Um, if you're using disc brakes, make sure you've got a six mil Allen key. If you need to use that to remove your to remove your wheels, if you do get a flat a flat tire, if you're using tubeless tires, make sure you've got a spare tube in case you do have a, a puncture that doesn't seal itself. Um, all these little things that you have to consider as you go into the race of what if this happens? How am I going to deal with this? What if this happens? How am I going to deal with this? What if this happens? How am I going to deal with this? So now's the time to start working on all that stuff. Um, um, the other thing would be to just get a nice, fresh set of goggles. Um, first thing that I noticed is when I swam in the lake was um, as soon as I dived in, I had pretty good condition goggles, but um, they're a little bit older and they fogged up straight away because of the, the water temperature versus the air temperature is too much of a differential. And I just got that film of, um, of moisture inside my goggles and it fogged up. So if I had nice fresh goggles, um, that'd be less likely to happen. So I've got some new goggles. I'll be using them on race morning. Um, make sure your wetsuit's fitting well. Make sure you haven't got any nicks and cuts in it. If you have got any cuts or, or, or tears in your suit, you can easily fix them with, um, wetsuit glue it's very easy to do i've done it myself um something that you can do over a, you know it takes 10 minutes it's um it's well worth doing um just to just to avoid any issues happening with you know pulling your wetsuit on race morning and having a hole become a massive hole which i've had that happen to me before as well um making sure that your shoes are in good condition um if you i, I don't use elastic laces in an ironman so i'll put normal laces in um Simple things, make sure your socks are the ones you would normally use, the ones you expect to be racing in. And then um, um, have a have a have an understanding of your fuel plan and how that's going to work. Are you when are you going to be picking up drink bottles off the bike course? How much fuel are you going to carry with you when you start the ride? How much fuel are you going to be picking up during the race? Um, and likewise on the run, are you going to start the run with a bottle in your hand? Um, are you um, are you going to be taking gels off the course? Are you going to be carrying your own gels? Do you have anything that special needs? And all these all these little things um, are just things that you can think about now between now and race day. And if you're not sure, write it down, come back to it a few hours later, and um, and and sort of think through the process of how am I going to deal with this? What's my plan for this? Um, all those sorts of things. Uh, in terms of 
in terms of training between now and the race, um, I'm a real fan of turning up fresh, not turning up tired, fatigued. I don't want to have any lag in my legs. I want to, so I kind of look at it and think, well, you know, if I miss a workout today, it's not the end of the world. Um, I was supposed to go for a bike ride today. My bike's in the shop. Obviously, I can't use it. I'm not worried about that bike ride I miss tomorrow. I won't do it. I just did my swim today. Um, chuck another bike ride in before the before race day is not going to change. Not going to change anything. Um, so yeah, just just be really careful about how much work you do now. If you have a little bit of fatigue in your legs, if you've got to get in the car and drive down to Taupo, I'd probably miss the workout just to just to save yourself a little bit a little bit of energy. Um, if you've um, had a few niggling injuries between now and the race, it's best to just avoid it, just to stay away from running. Um, you don't want to go out and test yourself to see if it's going to be okay because chances are you've just taken a step back in the injury rehab. Just just trust that on race day, your body will find its way to get through. Um, and, yeah, that's just, just a really important thing of looking after your body between now and the race. In terms of, um, in terms of diet between now and the race, I don't – I don't look at it and think I'm not going to be training as much. I don't need to have as much energy. I don't need to eat as much. I'll look at it and think I need to be lining up with as much um, good quality fuel on board stored in my um, muscle glycogen as I can get. And therefore I'm not going to restrict what I eat in race week. I'm still going to eat the same amount of food I would before. I'm going to make sure it's really good quality, um, fresh fruit, vegetables. Um, if you, if not vegetarian, then good, good quality cuts of meat. Um, if you are a vegetarian, find some other way to increase your protein intake and um, just ensure you've got some iron, uh, you know, enough iron in your diet and just just things to help you turn up to race day with the best version of yourself. Um, and yeah, I think, and, and the other one is the psychological thing. I, I look at a race like this and I don't think, um, I don't put too much expectation on myself of what I want to get out of out of time. I look at what I'm going to get out of myself in terms of a performance. I want to get the best I can out of my swim and whatever time that is, it'll be whatever time it is. I want to get on the bike, give myself the best chance to get off the bike with the best amount of energy I can to run, but not leaving myself with more work to do on the run than I needed to, but not getting to the point that I'm on the I'm getting to the end of the bike and really dreading having this run. So I'm not going to be looking at the time it takes because um, time is kind of irrelevant when there's weather conditions that come into play, but I'll be looking at getting off the bike, having thought to myself, I've still got plenty of gas in the tank, but I've still ridden fast enough to know that I've given myself a good shot at a, at a good performance. And then when I come to the run, um, I'll, because it's been four laps, I always like to think of my first lap, I build into it. My second lap, I found my level, maintain it. My third lap, I've got two choices. I can hang on for dear life or I can go into survival mode and uh, drag myself to the finish. And there's um, how you get to that stage in that last lap is really dependent on, on what you've done in the six, seven, eight hours prior to that, nine hours, 10 hours prior to that, whatever it is. So um, really look after yourself through the race mentally and physically um, to know that once you get to the end of the bike, you're ready to really give it all. Um, because in the end, in an Ironman, your whole Ironman performance is dependent on how little you slow down on the run. And if you go out the, if you go out with a blaze of glory, just charging down the road in the first couple of kilometres and you end up walking home, that's that's not really a satisfactory performance. It's starting out measured, controlled, coming home, um, feeling like you've managed it really carefully and you're not having to resort to um, changing into plan B, C, D, E, E, F, whatever. So you want to still want to be able to have your plan A the whole way through the race as you go. Um, and so, yes, in terms of, so beyond, beyond this race, so, so some of you guys will be finishing up this week, um, training plan finishes. Um, just, just give me one second. I'm just cooking some roast potatoes. I just need to make sure I'm not burning them. Hang on. Yes. Sorry about that. 
roast potatoes are absolutely perfect. So I'm perfect. I'm in perfect sight of the oven, and I could see them just turning that nice color. Um, so yeah, and in, in terms of oh, geez, where was I? In terms of uh, some of you guys will be finishing training with us this week, um, and the membership will will cease after this this race. Um, but some of you guys are carrying on through to um, Ironman or seventy point three um, in March. And if if you are, then um, it's really important to deal your deal with your um, the next phase of your training really really carefully. So um, most people that are doing the seventy point three are carrying on, and there's not many people that are doing Ironman in December and Ironman in March. So if you guys are, you're a little bit of a special case. You need to message me, and I need to talk to you about how to um, build your training plan around that because the recovery from this weekend's race is going to be super important for what you do in the March race to get to the March race well. A lot of you guys will be doing the 70.3 this weekend and then carrying on through to the March Ironman race or the 70.3 race um, which means um, the week after the race has to be dealt with very, very carefully and it's a true recovery week. I want you to take time off, give yourself as most amount of recovery that you can before setting into um, week two of this next block. So the next block comes out, uh, has come out now. I've just released it and it starts on the 13th of, is it 13th? 12th, 12th of December, which is Monday. And that um, that block will take you through for the next four weeks. So the so those of you that are racing this weekend, I want you to insert the recovery week on that first week of this, this next block that's come out. And then your training will start from week two as you go into that next phase. Um, if you treat if you if you deal with this recovery week properly, then you'll slot into week two quite quite well. Um, because you're already carrying a heap of fitness through from the having done the 70.3, you'll go into the second week um, and you would be well recovered and you'll you'll just pick things up as you were. Um, everybody recovers at a some diff slightly different rate. So some of you might need to tweak it a little bit, but if you have any any concerns, just, just send me a message. Um, I'd rather you ask me how to how to cope with it rather than try and do some guesswork and hope that you get it right. Um, and yeah, and things will continue through to the March, the March race from there. For those of you that are finishing up Ironman or 70.3 this weekend, um, I'll send out an email in a couple of days time, oh, a couple of days after the race, early next week, just with some instructions on where we're going to go from there. And if you wanted to pick up your um, membership to carry on to the next event you've got planning, then we'll, we'll discuss what, how you can do that um or else we'll um um or we'll just the membership can cancel and you can sign up again for the next next time around when we pick up one another one of these race plans so hopefully that makes all doesn't it makes enough sense um it's not too confusing but uh, yeah like i say i'll send out an email next week with a bit of information about how to um how to work that so for those of you that are finishing up this week um just a really want to wish wish you wish you well uh, for everybody, obviously, wishing you well. But for those of you that are finishing up this week, thank you so much for being part of this um, part of this training plan. And hopefully, with if you follow the twelve or the twenty-four week plan, that um, you've um, arrived at this at this weekend um, feeling fresh, ready to race, really well prepared, um, really confident in your ability, and just really looking forward to having a great race. Um, and please share with me your thoughts um, on how the race has gone, how the preparation has gone. Um, if there's any anything that you think we can do to improve the um, experience for you in the future or for future members, I'd love to know. I always want to try and make things better. Um, so don't be shy. Um, and um, yeah, I just I'm looking forward to seeing everybody out there in the race. Um, and uh, I'll try and look out for as many people as I can. But um, if I've if I've seen your face, then I know you. But if I haven't, just yell at me. And I'll uh, I'll try and give some sort of <laughs> some sort of response back to you. But uh, the good thing is we'll all be in the same boat. We'll be in the same level of um, of fatigue, and uh, we'll all be um, I'm sure we'll all have a smile on our face, and then we can uh, share in that um, at the finish. Uh, Paul's asked what my race number is. Uh, I'm race number fifteen. Actually, that's um, that's the lowest number I've been ever. Um, fifteen, I think. I think they they give low numbers to people that have done. This race too many times so um like i said i've done this this will be my 12th i'm in new zealand so um 
maybe they make the number lower and lower so eventually they can uh, not give me a number at all <laughs> because I've probably done too many of them. So yeah, race number 15. So um, please come and see me on Thursday if you want to catch up, 10 to 12 at the First Timers um, Seminar, uh, First Timers 10, and um, we'll have a bit of a chat. And um, But yeah, otherwise we'll see you on race day or I'll see you at the awards ceremony on Sunday. Hey guys, got any questions? Hey, I've got a random one. Um, I normally roll the old food bag on the front tube and I'm not talented enough to ride with both hands off the <laughs> handlebar. Um, so I've always just got my food unwrapped, bumper bars, yeah, whatever else I'm, I'm having. Um, yeah. But with it being raining, I don't know about soggy bumper bars. What do you reckon just having a <laughs> Ziploc bag at all? Or um, Yeah, that's a good question, eh? Because you kind of want to make it as... Dexterous as possible, like you, you don't want it to be too fiddly that you're having to um, muck around with things. Um, what if the bumper bar gets wet? Is it is it actually that bad, or is it you know can can you eat them if they're a bit soggy? Mm, to be fair, I probably haven't tried it out. <laughs> <laughs> I um I, I wouldn't recommend dipping them in water and eating them, but um like I've got a <laughs> I've got a food I've got a a box that sits on my top tube as well, and I have things stuffed inside it, but um if I have like a cliff bar I'll have that still sealed and then I just open it with my teeth so I might lie on the, I might um hold on my handlebars and just rip it out with my tooth and just feed it out and eat it that way or I'll put on I'll, I'll lie on the error bars and I'll just sort of fiddle with it with both hands as I'm trying to open it up the other thing you could do is pre-open them um mm -hmm. and so the, the packet's already open and all you gotta do is grab it out of the box and just sort of squeeze it so it works its way out and then you can just chew it that way um you, you might end up with a soggy bumper bar but um I'd, I'd rather you did that than tried to concoct some sort of contraption in ziploc bag that you're trying to muscle with and there's a bit of wind blowing and you know you're trying to negotiate um you know other people around you and and risk having a crash so yeah i would try i'd, I'd consider op opening them beforehand and having them sitting in that top tube bag and just yeah. um and just just accepting that they might get a bit wet. Cool, thanks. That's right. The other oh, the, and um, one thing that I've done years ago is I used to use salt tablets. Um, I don't use them anymore because I I don't really sort of think I need them. But um, and it might have been 2011 actually, and I had this really really great system of salt tablets where I'd I'd have this dispenser on my handlebars, and I, as I would turn the I would turn the dial and the salt tablet would pop out and I'd stick it in my mouth. And and what I hadn't factored in is if it's wet, what happens with those salt tablets? And by the time I got on the bike, I went to deliver myself my first salt tablet and it was just it was just completely dissolved. I had no salt tablets, had nothing. <laughs> and so I didn't have any in that day and I didn't have any cramp. And I thought, oh, maybe I don't need the salt tablets yeah. after all. <laughs> so everything, everything that happens just gets so much more, so much worse than um, when it's wet. So these mm -hmm. weird things will happen to us. Um, cool, oh, thank asked, you. That's right, Paul's asked how I put my name on my arm almost. Um, I've got a little tag on the inside of them so I can actually write RD on there. But um, yeah, I don't know, it's a good question actually. You could, if you've got black arm warmers, um, uh, God, I don't know. Twink? Twink, yeah, yeah, you could, or you could get a little bit of insulation tape, maybe stick it to the inside, or like like a bit of white tape, stick it to the inside, and just write your name in there, and just hope that as you take them off, they come off. Um, fluoro yellow, oh okay, we'll just write your name. I should just, I just write your name on them with um, <laughs> with with um with a felt pen. Maybe that's just the easiest thing. Um, just on the inside, so you don't have to um, so that so they're not that doesn't ruin them forever. Um, but yeah, I'd put your name on them. I mean, generally. I haven't. I have got my gear back that I've dropped, and um, I haven't had names on it. So it's it's not it's not the wild west out there. You should get your seals back, but um, yeah, it's just an element of safety if you needed to. If you want to make sure you got it back, I'm I'm go I'm going to put my name in my ASOS vest because that thing cost me a lot of money, and I don't want anybody else to wear that because that's that's uh that's the one I got off a former professional cyclist. So um, I don't want anybody to get my jacket. <laughs> um. Do I stop at the A stations at the drop station? No, I will take my arm warmers off as I as I approach it, 
and um, fold them up into a, into you know roll them up into the ball, and I'll just drop them as I go by. Um, you'll you'll actually see that there's a um, a gear drop off point, um, and I think it's pretty well signposted that this is where you can dump your gear. Pretty sure it's the last A station before Reparoa, um, but it'll it'll say in the um, in the race manual in the race briefing. Um, anything else there, guys? Oh, just one about socks. Do you recommend yeah. if it's going to be fully raining? Do, is it worth doing a change between the run and the bike, or are you just wet? Going to be wet anyway. So, who cares? Uh, I'm going to change my socks. I'm going to change my socks. Oh, I've got I've got Aero socks for the bike, so um, oh, I don't want to run in them because they're quite they're quite tight. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm definitely going to change my socks anyway. I think I think it's worth doing that. I think for the for the sake of a couple of minutes, not even not even that, maybe a minute. 30 seconds to a minute longer. Um, it'd be nice to be comfortable putting some dry socks on. So um, yeah, I would I would do that. Cool. Uh, anything else, guys? I reckon we'll wrap it up. And um, yeah, I had a question, Rob. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I just yeah. want to check. I may have missed may have missed that, but were you um, planning on doing a group session on that Friday morning, or we just leave Great everyone question. to I themselves? Had... I hadn't mentioned that. It's a very good, very good question. Yes, yes. Um, I've added it to the event calendar. Um, oh, right. So it's in there now, Friday morning. Um, I did put a, um, a a weather exclusion. So if it is crappy, um, I'll put a post. I'll put a message out and let people know that. Um, you know, if it's wet, I don't really want people riding on the road. So we might just do a swim run. Um, right. If it's really, really bad, we might do nothing. Um, I might tell people to go to the pool and have a swim, but um, yeah, we'll probably if, if it's really bad, I'll suggest that we don't ride. Um, yeah, yes. I've, I, I I had someone that crashed. Oh, Craig, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, you... I was right behind him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So yeah. yeah, I don't want to go through that again. I'll just just out explain yeah. to you guys. One of our athletes last last year wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah last last year crashed the day before the race and. Um, and it, yeah, it was he was fine, and he won his age group, so didn't really hold yeah. him back. But um, I was like, oh man, I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> yeah, and when Cam he when he went down, I didn't think he was racing the next day. So oh. I was incredibly impressed with his effort. Hey, Craig, can you believe he crashed at Kona in the first A station as well? Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so <he's, laughs> I've pretty much uh, banned. Uh, I don't know what I can do now. He's beyond help. <laughs> Is he is he racing this weekend? Or I'll just no. stay clear of him if he is. Okay. No, he's not. He's, he's safe. Yeah, we're all Actually, safe. <laughs> yeah, I'll be miles behind anyway. I'm no danger. We're all safe. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. We'll um yeah we'll we'll catch up there later on in the next couple of days. But um oh enjoy. Put your feet up and uh, enjoy these next few days of um of of no training or minimal training. <laughs> yep. Will do. Okay. Okay. See, See you guys. There. See ya. Cheers.